Hop. You fulfill a donde te va. Don't worry at all. Okay, so now we're going to do another uh, dedication by Chanatova. Okay, so we're going to read Kuflamed. Shiramalot mi marmakim kiratiha donai. Adonai shim ave kolit yena oznecha kashuvat et alta hanunai. Imavonot tishmar ya adonai mi aramod. Ki mecha sira le marantivarian. Ki viti adonai ki veta nafshi velit varo khati. Nafshi la donai mi shomrim la boker shomrim la boker ya khel israel la donai. Ki ma donai ya chesed verbe imofedut ve uvite israel mi kalavonotav. Gonna dedicate this class for the protection of our chayalim, for the victory, as Loren said, of our chayalim, for the victory of Am Israel against all uh, lies, for the truth to stand, and for the light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu to illuminate the world, and Bezrat Hashem, because the day of Rosh Hashanah is also the day of, of the crowning of HaKadosh Baruch Hu as our king. So we are going to Bezrat Hashem ask Akadosh Baruch Hu to help us that this Rosh Hashanah, the entire world, now sees Hashem as the King, and this would bring everything back to its place. Okay, so first, how are you doing? Good. Baruch Hashem. Are you getting excited by Rosh Hashanah coming up next week? Yes. Amazing. <laughs> Do you have any specific question? No? Okay. to think about and be mindful about like I'm things I can think about and share my preparation. Okay, great. Um Sunday, if you're interested, I, I we, we had that class last Sunday and we're gonna do another part of the class next Sunday. It's navigating through the Marzor, so th through the prayer book of Rosh Hashanah. It's very interesting. And I don't give it. It's someone else, Esther Waknin, who's uh, amazing. Oops. And uh, and you don't need to have followed the first class in order to attend the second. So in case you're interested on, on that part more specifically, what are we going to focus on in Shul? I can also update, uh, give you some tips, but we, we, we have a, a real program with a girls program on the side for little girls i'm sorry yeah. I know you have boys <laughs> but boys can go fishing while the girl, <laughs> while the girls will have fun and learn about Rosh Hashanah. okay so um now that we spoke in french about Rosh Hashanah itself i want to speak we said that it's the day of judgment and sometimes we're very scared i have a lot of of people who come to me and tell me, Esther, I'm almost paralyzed. When arrives the month of Elul, I feel like, oh my God, like I'm being judged in a month. I'm so scared. Um, I've been such a bad girl. <laughs> I'm like, what did you do? <laughs> uh, I don't know like how like I can improve my, my state because I'm totally paralyzed. Like I can't better myself. I can't even work. On myself, I'm just like paralyzed by that fear, okay? So I want to speak today about Elul because we still have uh, nine days of Elul, eight days of Elul, and Elul is a delicious moment. It's a moment of closeness with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's a moment of connection, of love, of true love, and nothing to do with uh, Elsa and Frozen, even though, like we said, like people were frozen there. <laughs> um, what is true love? The relationship between Hashem and his nation, Am Israel, is a beautiful description of true love, of what love is. Um, and for those of you who have studied marriage with me already, you know that love and marriage rely on three principles, three pillars, oneness, unity, 
and connection, right? This is marriage. This is love. Oneness, being one as one, remembering that whatever touches the other also touches me because we're one, my husband and I, right? Uh, and your husband and you, and you also. <laughs> uh, unity, meaning like we unite, we we really try to make that effort to come together and connection, work on the connection. Try to find things that connect you, right? This is the the pillar and the light motif of marriage. And it's exactly the same between Akadosh Baruch Hu and us. On Shavuot, we celebrated Matan Torah. Matan Torah is when Akadosh Baruch Hu gave us a ketubah, gave us a contract. You follow my contract and you are my beloved. You become my wife. We were under the spiritual chupa of Ar Sinai and Akadosh Baruch Hu and Am Yisrael be became one at that moment. The same way our husbands asked us, Ariat Mekudeshetli, you want to become Kadosh to me? And we said earlier that what is Kadosh? Kadosh is distinguished. It's our relationship with our husband is different from any other relationship in the world, from any relationship with a, another man, from any relationship with another woman. There's nothing like the link that unites a husband and a wife. And there's nothing like the link that unites HaKadosh Baruch Hu and Am Yisrael. It's distinguished. It's different from any other nations. <clears throat> the problem is that right after HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us the Torah, uh, what happened? Moshe Rabbeinu went up for 40 days. And what did he receive? He received the Luchot, the tablets, the Ten Commandments, right? That HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave him. Then he came back down. And the problem is that Jews who are today very good in calculus and algebra and accounting, right? At that moment, they miscalculated and they thought that Moshe was not coming back. They thought it was already 40 days and then Moshe didn't come back. And remember that they just got out of Egypt and therefore they were recently enslaved. They didn't really know how to manage themselves, how to be without a leader or without a master. And so what did they do? They got so scared, especially the men. The women had much, much more imuna. And the men decided to create a, 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 um, a golden calf, right? Which was supposed to represent a leader, a leadership for them because they were scared to be left out without a leader. But when, I, when Moshe Rabbeinu really comes down after really 40 days, with the tablets, with the luchot, which represents the union right, which represent the Ketubah. Who does he see? He sees the bride dancing with another man, right? He sees the Jews doing Avodah Zarah, doing idolatry. And what does he do? He, he let go of the, of the tablets of the Luchot and they shatter. Of course, he is going to ask Akadosh Baruch Hu. So this is on on the on Tisha B'Av. Uh, that's why we celebrate. That's the first reason why we celebrate. Yeah, because of the Chet Ha'eged. And then he's going to to speak with the with the Bnei Israel, and he's going to go back on our Sinai to ask HaKadosh Baruch Hu for forgiveness for, the, for his people. Please forgive them. You know, you know what? Like they were just out of Egypt. They didn't know what they were doing, but they love you. They really regret. Please forgive them. Please forgive them. And for 40 days again, he goes up from Rosh Chodesh Elul. He stays one-on-one -on -one with HaKadosh Baruch Hu and he's going to beg HaKadosh Baruch Hu for forgiveness. And he comes back 30 days after on Yud Tishri, on the 10th of Tishri, which is Yom Kippur. And that day, which is 
the day of forgiveness. Kadosh Baruch Hu says, I forgive them. Go back and now you have to craft yourself. You have to craft, you have to make the effort to seal that love in the stone, that relationship in the stone. Moshe Rabbeinu will carve the Luchot and will come down on Yom Kippur with the Luchot. And a new relationship is now ready. He will place those Luchot, those tablets, inside of the of the Echal, of the Aaron HaKodesh, sorry, okay, which is inside of the Mishkan, which was the portable temple at that time. And the Aaron HaKodesh is the most uh, Kadosh, so holy, extraordinary, extraordinary thing in the world. And you know what else was inside of that, of that uh, Aaron HaKodesh? The first Luchot, the pieces, the broken pieces. Why? Because this is a healthy relationship. This is love. It represents our relationship with Akadosh Baruch Hu. Yes, it's true. We sinned. We did a chet. What does it mean to do a chet in a teilim? Hmm? Exactly. We miss the destination. Exactly. Chet, when we say, I did a chet, is that I missed the destination. I didn't go where I was supposed to go. This is David Amela who teaches us. That's why I'm holding the daily book. I didn't go where I was. You expected me to go. I missed my destination, but I'm not going to stay in that destination forever. I can always shuv. I can always come back. Doing teshuvah is coming back to the place you were supposed to be. Hashem expected you at one place, right? And this is where on Rosh Hashanah is expecting you to come back. On Rosh Hashanah, Adam Arishon was born, was created. He was not born. He was created, right? On Rosh Hashanah, the first of Tishri, the first of Tishri, Adam Arishon was created, and he also did a chet. He did the chet of the chet sadat, right? Of the fruit of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That same first of Tishri. When he did that sin, he fell into this world where we are now. Adosh Baruch Hu told him the new rules. Now you're not in Gan Eden. Now you live in a world where huh, food doesn't come like that. Unless you're a Rothschild. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You have to work. You have to do your efforts. You have to make your Ishtadlut in order to receive your Parnasa. And the woman, you will have to go through child. The suffering child birth. Bearing a child, for three months you have the nauseas, then you feel a little better, and then you have the heaviness, and then you have to give birth, but you have a baby. Then you have to educate that baby. And then you have to worry for all his life. This is part of our of our life now. It wasn't like that in Gan Eden, right? And Hashem is going to ask Adam Arishon, on that first of Tishri, of the first year of creation, Hayeka. Hayeka, which means, where are you? So the Baal Atanya teaches us, it's not like random, this question. Why Hayeka? Hashem is almighty. He knows where Adam Arishon is. What does it mean, Hayeka? Hayeka is, where are you at with the mission I gave you? You were supposed to live in that garden. Forever, until Shabbat comes. The first of Tishri was a Friday. So Shabbat was supposed to come right after, a few hours after. But because you didn't respect the rule, now, where are you at? What are you going to do? What are you going to do with that mission? And we are continuing that mission of Adam Arishon to do the tikkun olam, to fix the world that was once broken, right? So every year on Rosh Hashanah, Hashem is asking us, Ayeka, where are you at? <coughs> that day of Rosh Hashanah is the day of judgment. Can I change anything on the day of judgment? No. When can I change? The days before. I can prove that, yes, if I could, 
I would go back and I can. I would do teshuva. I would go back to where you expected me to be. You expect me to be, I don't know, like a little bit more uh, uh, calm, to work on my uh, anger, to work on my anxiety, to to speak, to, to, to like have a better shalom bite, whatever it is. I'm going to do teshuva. I still have eight days. Usually we have a month. But even if we are realizing that today, it doesn't matter. I still have eight days. To show HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you know what? This is not where I want to be. So what do we do? How do we do teshuva? First, we make a list. Not only of what we want to eat and who we want to invite, but where, which destination am I supposed to be in? I'm supposed to be this and that. That's where I want to be. Or what did I do that I regret doing? For instance, like let's speak about someone who has a problem with anger management, right? Let's make a list of some of the episodes of big crisis this year. Oh, I spoke like that to my mom and I did that to my son and I did that to my husband. I, I, I. What do we do? You regret? You want to show? You want to go back to who you can really be? You can. You really regret? Yes. What do you have to do? Ask for forgiveness. First, to the people who are impacted by that behavior. The husband, the, the mother, the son, whoever, the, the housekeeper, whoever it was. Sorry, Mechila, 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 I'm so sorry. I really, I don't know, like, you know, it's difficult for me. This is something I really want to work on. I really apologize. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry. It's difficult to say one-on-one. -on -one. Text. Don't send general text. It has to mean something. Hashem knows what we have inside our guts. And then you say, Hashem, I'm so sorry. Because this impacted not only your relationship with Ben Adam La, la Javero, with, with another fellow, but also with Akadosh Baruch Hu, because when you get angry, this is a sin. Kaas is really not the destination where Hashem is expecting us to be. So let's do Teshuvah now. Let's take a moment, not now, now, but when you go back to your house, because it's, it's a very personal introspection. In which area do I really want to do Teshuvah? And we're not going to do Teshuvah maybe on every single <laughs> detail because maybe we're, we're humans. It's okay. Let's find areas where we can do that, right? And improve. And really say, I'm sorry, I'm sincere. I really don't want to do that anymore. Right? Did a mistake. And just like a very sincere wife who would have made mistakes with her husband, Akadosh Baruch Hu will look at that wife and say, You know what? I know you're sincere. I accept your apologies. And to me, you're just like a betula, you're just like a virgin. And that's why the Mazal of Elul is the Betula, the Virgin. Because we have the ability to be Virgin again in our relationship with Akadosh Baruch Hu. Our criminal, criminal record can be white again. During the month of Elul, we just need to make one little step towards Akadosh Baruch Hu. That's one thing. Now, we also have to understand that why is it so important to do it in this moment? In this month, the Balatanya teaches us that Hamelech, the king, Basadeh, is in the field. What does it mean the king is in the field? I'm not in the field. I'm at the beach. I'm in Miami Beach. I'm in my office. I'm in my kitchen a lot. I'm not in the field. If Hashem comes in the field, I'm not going to be there. What does the field represent for us? The field represents our daily life. At that time, we were all in the field. This is where we would 
go to the supermarket, right? We were in the field. Hashem comes to you in your daily life. He's next to you. And as difficult as it is to reach out to the king during the rest of the year, we have a lot of things we want to share with Hashem during the rest of the year. But he's busy. He's in on his kisei hakavod. He's on his throne of glory. But during the months of Elul, he is there next to you, holding your hands, your body, your beloved. Elul also stands for Ani le Dodi ve Dodi Uli. I am to my beloved and my beloved is to me. Hashem came towards us. Now it's our turn to come to him. And we have to remember that he loves us. It's a love relationship. There's nothing to fear. We have to have awe, which is like a different feeling than fear. Fear petrifies us. Awe brings us respect and admiration. We are on the day of Rosh Hashanah. We will be crowning Hashem. But right now, we are in the arms of Hashem. And we are not crowning Hashem just like any creature in this world. We're not any subject. Imagine that the prince of the, of the kingdom is crowning, is the one holding that crown and putting it on the head of his father. This is what is happening on Rosh Hashanah. The father is going to come with a smile and see his son or his daughter and say, put it on my head. So it's not the same relationship. We should not be petri petrified. We still have time to be totally Bien sûr. to be totally cleansed and to, 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 to be in his, hand, in his arms. We just have to be sen sensible to that. We have to open our mind to that because it's not obvious. We don't see Hashem's har arms around. But if we are sensitive to him, if we want to see him, if we want to see those kisses, those hugs, we will feel them. We will let our tears go when we see something that we feel like, wow, this is a hug of Hashem. This is a big kiss. This is a demonstration of love. I feel him there. So let's open ourselves and create that kli, that container to receive love. Because you know what's the most horrible feeling on earth? Is to love someone and not to be loved in return. Imagine that you have a son who loves a woman. He is coming to her and he tells you, mommy, like, prepare. I want to, I want to ask, I want to do my, my demand, right? I want to ask her to marry me. He arrives, you helped him set up like the flowers and the merry me candles and the, everything. And he arrives, he knees down, he opens the, the box, the jewelry box with a beautiful ring inside. And she doesn't even pay attention. She doesn't even see him. How painful is it? She doesn't even know. She doesn't even understand what he's doing. Oh, what are you doing? Stand up. You know, like, and she leaves. We cannot leave Akadosh Baruch in this situation. He comes to us. He wants to create oneness with us. If we are not sensitive to him, we will not create that recipient for his love. And we leave him with that frustration that I have my beloved. I want to give her everything, but she doesn't want to create that space for me to give her. She doesn't want to be that recipient for my love. So that's our job for the next nine days. Create 
that recipient. B, that Kli, for Akadosh Baruch Hu's love. Make space for him in your day to observe, to feel, to be grateful for what he gives you every second. Don't ignore him. Make that time. And then go in your kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Thank you. Thank you so much.